The first half of this video is slightly more for the newbies. We're going to show how to apply Bendio to a layer, adjust the start and end points, make the bend and attach other layers. And if you're a more experienced After Effects user, you might be able to figure a lot of that out yourself. But if you want to use Bendio on a continuously rasterized layer, like a shape layer directly without pre-composing it, the workflow for doing that is unlike anything else out there. So do make sure to check out the second half of this video in that situation. Here in After Effects, I've imported a Photoshop document with three layers. That's just this central stem of a rose and then these two leaf layers. Uh, and I've adjusted the anchor points of the leaves so that they rotate around the right point. I'm going to select the central stem layer and I want to apply Bendio. So I'll go to Effect, Animatable, Bendio. And then in my Effect Controls panel, uh, I can dial up the bend to sort of see how it's working and where things are bending. The start and end points uh, will dictate sort of how wide the bend is uh, like that. And if you've applied it to um, a very tall and thin there like this, I'll just set this back to zero, it may well work fine out of the box like this one kind of is. Uh, same goes for very sort of horizontally aligned layers because to begin with the start and end point will either be horizontally or vertically aligned. But if you apply Bendio to a layer that's more sort of diagonally aligned like this uh, leaf here, and we'll just do that as an example, you'll find that you know the start and end points probably don't really reveal the right part of your layer and don't seem to be in the right place. So you'll then have to just sort of play around a little bit with the start point and the end point, getting them where you think they want to be, maybe having a look at how that seems to bend. And then if you still see this cropping, which you don't want, you can uh, widen it with this width ratio slider here so you can see all your layer uh, and still get it to bend nicely like that. Now, I don't actually want to bend the leaves, so I'm going to delete Bendio from there and come back to the flower layer. Uh, in case it isn't completely obvious, if you can't see the little crosshairs for the start and end point, that might be because you don't have the effect itself selected. It's possible, of course, to have the layer selected, but not the effect. And in that case, you won't see those crosshairs. You have to click on the little effect name here in order to see those uh, 2D effect controls. Uh, so let's set a keyframe here for bend zero and then come over to the end of the comp and just dial this up. Now, when we set the attach points where you attach your layers to the bend, it's going to need to be done uh, at a point where the layer can be seen without any bending. You can't set these when it's bent. So uh, we can either come back to this frame here where I set my first keyframe. I'll just hit U to show that keyframe there. And since we're on zero bend, that's fine. We could use that. Or if for some reason uh, we don't want to have a keyframe with a value of zero, if we want to have the layer permanently bent like this, for example, then we'd need to disable the effect in order to see it unbent, undistorted like that. Uh, I'm going to use the other method, so I'll turn the effect back on and just come back here to where it's not bent. And then to set an attach point, you can either click the crosshair for the one that you want to set and then click it again in the comp viewer. So that's now positioned attach point one here down where I clicked on that uh, bottom of that first leaf, or you can drag them out. They're all at zero, zero by default, which is the top left hand corner of your layer. So they're actually all just sort of uh, tucked under that little um, UI sort of square there of the layer bounds. But if I click and drag, I can pull one out and let go where I want it to be. Uh, and that was going to be for the second leaf. So once you've got um, one or more attach points set where you want them, you will need to select them in this drop down here where it says select attach point. We'll go for the first one uh, and then click the generate null button that's down here. So once I've done that, you see that it's generated a null layer in the timeline, it's parented it to the source layer, and that null is now gonna follow along with the bend. We need to do uh, another one for attach point two, so I'm gonna select attach point two in here and then click generate null again. And now we have two nulls in the timeline. We still need to parent our layers, of course, so the lower leaf here would be parented to attach point one, uh, and the upper leaf is gonna be parented to attach point two, and then as the layer bends, the other layers follow along perfectly with it like that. The attach nulls have an effect on them which allows you to turn off the auto rotation and to reassign them. So if I just select this upper one here, if I turn off the auto rotation, you'll see that now that null is just gonna stay level with the comp and so the layer is not going to auto rotate even though it moves. 
Uh, and if I change the auto assignment to say touch point one, then it's going to jump down like this. So they now both as attach points are actually assigned to attach point one like that. And I've put it back on two. So we get everything normal as expected like that. If you crank your layers bend all the way up like this so that it overlaps, you do have the choice of whether the pixels after the end of the bend are rendered on top or underneath the ones at the start, if that makes sense. And that's this composite operator here. So at the moment, the flower head, which is from the top, is rendering under the bottom of the stem because it says under here. But if I change this to over, then it'll render over on top. And we can change the opacity of the way things are composited together like that as well if we want to. So let's just go back here to where everything is set like that. Zoom out and then come back to the start. That's how Bendio works uh, on bitmap layers, but the workflow is very slightly different for shape layers, text layers, and any kind of continuously rasterized layer. So over in this other comp here, I have uh, a fairly basic character rig, which is entirely made up of shape layers. Uh, now shape layers are always continuously rasterized, and that's the opposite to bitmap layers, which are always rasterized. I can't turn on this uh, collapse transformations or continuous rasterization switch for these bitmap layers. It's uh, not there. And with shape layers, I can't turn it off even if I click on them. But there's another type of layer where you do have the choice, and that is illustrator layers that you've imported, which you can either allow to be rasterized at their present pixel dimensions if the switch is off, or you can turn the continuous rasterization switch on, and then they'll be treated a bit like shape layers where they stay sharp even if you scale them up. And you may also find that you use a pre-comp with Bendio, and pre-comps can also be continuously rasterized or not. Text layers are just like shape layers that they're always continuously rasterized. But with the types of layer that you get to choose continuous rasterization, uh, you would need to decide whether you're gonna continuously rasterize it or not before you start using Bendio. Because Bendio's workflow is very slightly different when you use it on a continuously rasterized, or what I would call a vector layer. And now we're gonna explain why and how we use it. So let's take this torso here for this character. Let's say we want the torso to bend over to one side uh, as he rises up in the air. So I'll select it, I'll go to Effect, Animatable, Bendio, and I'll move my uh, start point up here so that it bends from uh, just under his navel, and I'll put the end point roughly where his neck would be. Uh, I can see I need to just increase the width ratio a tiny bit. Um, and if I just zoom in so you can see this uh, torso here, perhaps a bit better. You can see hopefully this little start uh, crosshair and the end crosshair here under his nose. But as I go through the timeline, those crosshairs don't move. They stay relative to the comp rather than traveling with the layer. And that is the characteristic of all effects in After Effects on continuously rasterized layers. It doesn't matter whether it's got a 2D effect control in it or not. If you apply something like turbulent displace or fractal noise or roughen edges to a shape layer, it won't move along with the layer. Uh, but that's obviously a problem uh, when it comes to bending things. So what we would need to do is come to a point in our timeline where we've got these two uh, things in the right place. Let's say here on frame zero where I actually positioned them in the first place and we would click on convert to mask. Just to be clear, this is only for continuously rasterized layers. You convert to mask and what it will do is it'll generate a mask on the layer with two points in it that correspond to that start and end point. And then it will apply expressions to the start and the end properties linking them to that mask. Uh, and that might seem a little bit strange because what's the point of a mask that isn't marking anything? In fact, it's set to none and turned off in the timeline. Well, the thing about masks is that they transform with your layers. So now you'll see that as he moves up, of course, the mask is moving up. And so that allows the uh, 2D effect controls of the start and end to move with it. And we need to do the same thing for our attach points. So I'm going to have to uh, be a little bit repetitive here. And I'm going to use my crosshairs to uh, add attach points to where the shoulder, the neck, and the other shoulder would go like that. And then uh, 
you know, on the frame where I have them in the right position, I would need to convert them to mask, but I'm gonna to have to do it one by one. So we'll go one, convert to mask, two, convert to mask, and three, click again. You can see the uh, properties changing to red as the expressions get applied, and we can see those attach point masks being added in the timeline. Uh, just to be clear, you can't adjust those mask points when you're in the effect. So if I've got the effect selected here, uh, I can't adjust, I can't drag any of those points anywhere around. That's actually only because I'm in the effect. I just need to click on the layer itself and now I can move uh, the points of that mask around or the other ones like that to reposition them. And you can see these values will change as I move. So that's all good. And now I just need to generate my nulls. So I'll do these in reverse order. Let's click on generate null for number three, number two, and then number one like that. And you can see it adding those nulls. And then his uh, right arm would have to be parented to number one. I think that's right. Yep. And then the head would be parented to number two. And then the left arm parented to number three. So now uh, I should be able to bend him. I'm going to set a keyframe for the bend here and zoom out so you can see what happens. Uh, and as he comes up in the air, let's apply that bend and everything moves along just how we expect it. Not only is the uh, 2D effect traveling because of the masks, but the bends occurring as well. So I can, I'll just deselect so it looks a bit better. Uh, you can see his arms moving along with the bend perfectly. And you can still uh, set up chains of bends on layers like this. So if I wanted to bend his arms as well, I could select an arm and apply Bendio. And again, I would have to go through the convert to mask process because this is still a continuously rasterized layer. But you can still set everything up just like you'd expect with multiple bends or multiple layers, uh, whether they are raster or vector. And as I said at the beginning, do remember uh, with illustrator layers, to make a decision about whether you're going to continuously rasterize them or not before you start using Bendio. Because once you've applied all these masks, uh, it, it's not so simple to kind of just delete them and go back to a kind of raster workflow. And similarly, if you start out not using the masks on an illustrator layer and then later decide that you want to scale it up or something so that you can uh, you know, maintain the sharpness of the Beziers, then it's it, if you've already set up Bendio and all your bends and attach points, then unfortunately it's too late to then convert it to a mask at a later stage. You do need to make a decision about those types of layers up front. If you've got any questions about Bendio, just fire an email off to steve at animatable.co or get hold of me on Twitter or Instagram with the handle animatable.co. See you next time.